Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and I told you guys we'd be back with another Suburban to look at the smart data list on the uh, brand new Snap-on Zeus with Intelligent Diagnostics. So, here we are. And uh, one of the things that I'll show you here is that the customer noted that the check engine light never comes on on this vehicle, and it runs a little bad. Uh, we know why it runs bad partially. It's got a cylinder that likes to misfire um, at one point in time something either a piece of a washer or something uh, somehow got uh, dropped down into the intake and made it into one of the cylinders uh, number one cylinder to be exact and uh, we got the pieces that were left fished out but i think it messed up the valve seat or something in the cylinder because uh, it it likes to misfire on that cylinder they uh they opted not to do anything just uh, run it as is for now so that's why it stumbles a little here and there, but um, we're still going to just kind of take a look and we're going to look at look and see what we find with the Zeus when we hook up to this. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we'll take our interface and we'll just plug it in right here. And uh, I don't know if you could kind of see, I think it may have an issue coming up. Sometimes it looks like it takes a second, but this green light will come on. Yep, see right there. And that's the light that's indicating that it is plugged in and it's got power. So let's go ahead and take a look at the scan tool and see what we find. So for those of you who don't know, and I know this video is kind of geared more towards the people in the industry, so I just kind of assume you know. When I made the statement that the customer noticed that the check engine light never comes on, that's not a good thing. See, when you turn the key to the on position initially, your check engine light, service engine, zoom light, uh, most every light on your cluster should come on. It's a bulb test to verify that the light actually works uh, so that you know if there is a fault, you're going to see the light is going to come on. So let's take a look at the cluster and turn the key on and see what we see. Okay, on these, your check engine light should be somewhere right over here in this area. Let's go key on, and we have no check engine light. So, let's, uh, let's go ahead and shut it off and turn the Zeus on and see what we find. Okay, we're in sleep mode, so let's wake it up and see, there we go. Let's get this, uh, get the key turned on and I forgot my stylus one second okay got it let's go okay so keys on we're going to click scan tool and I don't know why this thing doesn't like to focus on this screen it's not very fun so we're gonna pick I'm gonna pick focus. Okay. Chevrolet. This is a 99. Let's go ahead and do automatic ID. Let's see what we can pull. Hey, look, there we go. Full bin. Awesome. Less than 86. No air pump. And uh, let's just take a look at the engine. Codes menu. Display codes. Let's do all powertrain codes. Oh, we've got a couple. Uh, 125 insufficient timer temperature for closed loop. Uh, P0131 signal low or signal low bank one sensor one. Low activity bank one sensor one. Heater circuit bank one sensor two. Um, Engine misfire detected. <laughs> we know what that one's from. Fuel level sensor circuit or sensor circuit signal high or open. That's uh, obviously an issue. The fuel gauge does not work. Uh, let's take this one. Just this uh, signal low bank one, and let's see what it pulls up. Now we see that. Sorry, the video cut out there. Uh, was acting weird anyway so we see that 
the peak of the oxygen sensor being the most common problem is about 125,000 miles and this truck has just over 200,000 which means we would be up here um, and yes the oxygen sensor is still the most common problem but like I'd said before in the other video we don't want to just jump at oh must be an oxygen sensor let's look at what information we have what we can see um, and this is where I hope, I hope, I hope we find uh, something that I can show off what this can do with the smart data. Because the smart data is one of the things that's going to shortcut uh, some of the time spent filtering through uh, data. So let's take a look at the smart data. Um, I'm going to start the vehicle. Um, if you'll notice, it says smart data works best when the vehicle is idling at operating temperature with no load present. The AC is shut off in that. And as you heard, that uh, that beep when it first came, it brought up these flags. Here's one of the things that I like is our heated oxygen sensor, bank one, sensor two, bank two, sensor two, short-term fuel trim, and uh, what else? Do we have anything else here? These are flagged as the, um, th sorry, these are flagged as the PIDs that are gonna be most important. And this one's red, so this is saying there's something funky about this PID. There's something not right. It's out of what, it, you know, the range it should be. So let's just take a look at this short-term fuel trim. Uh, and let's see what it's doing. As we see, the short-term fuel trim is zero. It is just dead zero, and it's not moving at all. That's not what the short-term fuel trim should be doing. It should be moving as the O2 sensor moves. So let's take a peek at some of the O2 sensor voltages and see what's going on with that. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Sensor two, long-term percentage is zero. Uh, so it's been doing this same thing for a while. Okay, here we go. This this is starting to shape up to be interesting. Okay. Um, we see bank one sensor one and bank two sensor one. These are upstream sensors on both sides. Um, 451 millivolts, 451 millivolts. So here's the thing about that. That makes me wonder because when I see 451 millivolts just dead like that, the first thing that comes to my mind is bias voltage. Voltage that's put down a, uh, you know, down the signal wire, or on the signal wire, uh, sometimes is a diagnostic step. It, if you see that, you know that you're not getting a signal from the sensor, that this is put in there by the computer. That's what sometimes you see, you know, dead middle right there. Uh, so I wanna see, I want to go see if maybe we have a sensor, a harness, uh, where maybe both of these are go through the same section of harness or something. It's been damaged, it's been broken, something like that. But the cool thing about this, and I and I wanted to show you, and I'm really glad this turned out the way it did, uh, and we got to see this, see if there's anything else here, is that for those of us in the field that we've spent time and we know, hey, we get this code, we need to look at this data. You know, uh, another example that comes up, and I, I wish I had one so I could check it and see, would be like a lot of the Fords with uh, mass airflow sensor issues. We know that one of the biggest indicators is um, the, the reading uh, of the uh, barometric pressure. I believe, yeah, the barrow reading, if it's below uh, about 150, it's usually indicating that it's bad, that sensor's bad. And for uh, years, there's nothing to indicate on the scan tool for to say, hey, this, this reading's not right. This is too low. But if you could hook up and you weren't experienced enough with that, and you could look at that PID if it was like 128 in, on one of those vehicles, and it showed up red, you would know, hey, something's not right about that. And what I like is that, see this, I'm guessing because these were there aren't switching, these aren't moving at all. These aren't moving up and down as the O2 sensor moves back and forth. So it's saying, hey, you need to pay attention to short-term fuel trim because something that's not not cool is going on there. I don't like it, uh, something's not right. It draws your attention to the stuff that's gonna help you diagnose this the fastest because 
here's where we're at. If I was not as experienced with some of this stuff as I am, and some people weren't, you know, some people aren't as experienced with this, they're still learning. If I got drawn to that right off the bat, it's, oh, hey, short term is, you know, out, you know, if I didn't, if I got drawn to that, I, that's how I knew, hey, well, that's supposed to follow the, uh, voltage on the O2 sensor so I go look at the O2 sensors and the voltage is fixed at 451 millivolts I know now that I'm going down to the sensor and I'm going to be looking at the connector to see if there's connection problems I'm going to be looking at the harness to see if the uh, if the harness is broken somewhere uh, I am going to there and I know what I'm looking for and I know why I'm looking for it and it was very quick to get here I didn't have to make a custom data list which I'm not above making custom lists and filtering out everything else I don't want to look at that's fine but I do like that they flag the important stuff and they make it red whenever it uh, is out of the range that it should be so why don't we just go take a look at one of these other things just to kind of play around let's look at one of these other codes uh, we had a bank two sensor one, uh, low accurate, same over here, um, very similar, uh, replaced oxygen sensor, only at 200,000 we are by far the most, uh, common one. Now this is one of those write-ups that, like I said, they, they have a team of ASC certified technicians that call and speak to the shops and they verify this information, they make these write-ups. Uh, and that's a really good resource to have. Connect to scan tool found code, uh, P0151, live data, signal firmware was inactive and below specification of the key on engine off. Check voltage. Checked the wiring and harness connectors. Uh, back probe oxygen, snap throttle, and monitor. performed a propane enrichment at idle monitor sensor. Okay, so basically they're saying what they're doing is they uh, you can either pull a vacuum hose to run it lean, or you can do what they call propane enrich enrichment by running pro uh, unburned propane into the engine through a vacuum hose to run it ri way rich, and just see if the O2 sensor. Uh, changes as it should and if it doesn't then you know if everything else is good they checked all the the wiring and that then you know you got a bad sensor but this helps you walk through what some of the diagnostic steps could be uh, let's see if there's any tips uh, DTC is sets let's click on this one low voltage for an extended period of time If O2 sensor is less than 0 0.086 and increases to about 450 volts after. Okay. And see, that's kind of what I was talking about is when you disconnect it, if it goes to 450 uh, or 450 millivolts after it's disconnected, suspect the heat O2 sensor may be internally shorted. Um, that's because almost anything, uh, a presence of voltage or it being shorted will pull this uh, bias voltage on the line down to nothing. So uh, it, it's used as a diagnostic aid, and, and that's kind of what I think we're, we're looking at. It's why I'm, I'm thinking we might find a uh, um, an issue with the harness or something. So let's, uh, let's, let's go on past this, or uh, you know, past this and go down and actually look at the vehicle. But I really like that I got the chance to show you guys what the smart data can do and how it can uh, focus you in on the PIDs that you need to pay attention to. I really like that. It's going to help people who are less experienced be able to get to the answer a lot quicker uh, than they have in past. Let's go look at these O2 sensors and see what we're going to find. Well, uh, my suspicions are correct. There is an issue with the harness. It's not plugged in. Uh, and I don't know, it doesn't look like it's been too horribly long. It's hard to say. Where is the harness into that? Anyway, I'll have to dig the harness, but it, it's not plugged in. Um, and this is on this side, and I only showed you this side, but on the other side, it's the uh, it's the exact same thing. The uh, upstream O2 sensor is not plugged in. So that answers why we have 450 millivolts uh, on, on the signal wire. So 
Uh, I'm going to crawl off under this vehicle, and we are actually probably just going to wrap this video up. Uh, let's get off under the vehicle and talk about it. Okay, so, well, what I'm glad about is the fact that I got to show you some of the smart data through the Snap-on Zeus, but I'm not going to take this repair much farther with this video right now. I'm going to have to find the harness ends, make sure they're not damaged. I'm going to have to figure out who and at what point they left those O2 sensors unplugged and uh, why, because if those if those uh, harness ends have been sitting there unplugged for any long amount of time, if they're corroded or anything like that, I may have to end up putting new ends on the harness, get new O2 sensors, plug them in, and then go from there and see um, what else I find, if there's any other issues. But I was, I was kind of glad with this one wound up. I'm not happy that I may have to go uh, get some pigtails and solder them in and and do that but uh, as far as the tool I really like the fact that I got the opportunity to show you that after some of the jobs that I had lined up kind of fell through but I hope you like the uh, review videos that we're doing here on these I may be able to get one more uh, today is actually my last day with the tool I've got to hand it back over to the snap-on dealer who was nice enough to allow me to borrow this for the weekend I've got to hand it back to him tomorrow so if I can line up one more today, I'm going to get you guys on one more vehicle with this tool, and we're going to see what we can find. Uh, but thank you for hanging out and checking out these videos. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. There will be more to follow.